Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. I've been going through the Giller books, and today I'm going to do the, a shortlisted book by uh, Miriam Tooze, and it is Fight Night. I really liked her other books that I've read, which Women Talking was phenomenal as far as I'm concerned, and All My Puny Sorrows was similarly great. So I was very excited to get to this book. This is a not heavy on plot book. It features a narrative by a nine-year-old girl named Swiv who stays with her grandmother while her uh, mother is at work because she got into a fight and was expelled, uh, a fight which was precipitated by her grandmother uh, who is a polarizing figure, but their relationship dynamic is definitely the uh, most compelling aspect of the narrative. The loose plot is the grandmother needs to make a trip and Swiv ends up accompanying her, things ensue, um, and basically that is pretty much the plot. Not too much else happens other than we are pretty granular in detail from what Swiv is describing and the narrative is one of the rare occasions when I think the uh, construction of the nine-year-old child's narrative is just almost perfect where it is surprisingly humorous not in a um, intentional way it is almost a peripheral detail that occurs just from Swift kind of not being in the know of what is happening with adults and also uh, the grandmother is quite funny maybe intentionally Ed Swift either understands it sometimes and doesn't but when she chronicles it in her journal which we are ostensibly reading uh, we get the humor that way as well it's actually surprisingly effective I don't usually like humorous narratives so that being said I consumed it both on um, audio as well as on a ebook reader uh, an arc edition and the arc edition was way harder to get through just because as you would expect the construction at a craft wise type of situation the nine-year-olds uh, sentence by sentence and paragraph by paragraph uh, construction is not interesting it's very like short clipped um, not big on diction it's fairly innocuous at best boring when at its worst sort of construction for its formatting but it still swings the pendulum back to something that's usually interesting and or funny when you start getting in a rut and um, feel like it's getting a little bit tiresome on your eyes when you're continually reading a similar type sentence which is why the audio, I think, is the best way to consume this. It is still noticeable sometimes because the person can't do that much to characterize short clip sentences, but usually the um, tone and inflection is so good that it clips along nicely and you can always speed up an audiobook so that it's like uh, one and a half times, 1.5 times or whatever, and you're overdriving essentially what you would be reading and so getting through it faster. I like that a lot. It's definitely the, it bumped up my star rating from a three to a four is how much it affected my reading experience of the book. So I would definitely recommend that. I would say the characterization of all three of the main characters, the mother, the grandmother, and Swiv are very well done, very well realized. Most of the people that they interact with similarly have a, um, I wouldn't say comical bent, but it's almost like Fargo, where they have like a very specific personality and their motivation is such that they pursue that motivation till, you know, the wheels fall off, basically. It works very well for this type of narrative and especially is similarly, again, humorous with Swib noticing the way that uh, adult interact and uh, she's been socialized in such a weird way by her grandmother that you know she says a lot of swear words and <laughs> uh, 
a lot of like colloquial sayings that I don't know maybe it's just quintessentially Canadian in some of them but I just felt it was a very endearing and interesting narrative. Again don't expect a very plot heavy book here. The main thrust of the plot is simply to put Swiv into different situations with her grandmother and there is some foreshadowing occurring but otherwise I would say it's a very simple yet precise uh, construction and the expectations that you might have from women talking and all my puny sorrows might hinder you here. The first time I read the book I was a little bit disappointed. I wanted something more complex and maybe mm, thematically heavier but uh, this still has something well worth saying about family and about um, patriarchal institutions and um, the resilience of women, which is always a good thing to consume. So it definitely is a recommendation. I thought it was stronger than Son of the House, not as strong as The Listeners. So, so far, those are my rankings on the books. I just got the um, fourth book for The Giller today, and I'll be looking at that next video. Hopefully you can see that, check it out, leave some comments, talk to me, give me some feedback, whatever. And if you have any thoughts, comments about this book in particular, hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you next video. See you later.